My name is Scott Marlowe. I work for the Rural Advancement Foundation International USA. We're based in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. Um, this is our conversation about why we spend a lot of money on commodities and not on fruits and vegetables, or much less on fruits and vegetables. This is our fourth video. Um, last time we talked about the sort of environment in which those crops are grown. This time we're going to talk about the markets in which these commodities are bought, sold, and traded and how that affects what, um, what we do in terms of commodity programs. And this brings us to our third area, which is the markets in which commodities are bought, sold, traded. The ways in which they go from being corn and wheat and beans into being food products and industrial products and all kinds of other stuff. All of these things that we've talked about feed into a system which allows very large companies to, one, know when the crop is going to come in, depend on a regular supply, and also be able to store and transport that supply very easily. You know, um, and, and these markets are highly concentrated. This issue of corporate concentration is one that we've heard more about in the financial crisis, but has been growing in agriculture for a long time. According, there was one quote that said that one company uh, gives the farmer his credit, sells him his seed, buys the crop, and when the crop is in, sells him the rope to hang himself. Well, that was 1935. So, this issue of corporate effect of corporations is not a new issue, but it is a very important issue. According to one study, in, in 19, in, according to one study, in 2007, the top three companies controlled 55% of the flour milling industry. The top four companies controlled 80% of soybean crushing, and of those, the top three controlled 71%. This is not the competition of an open market. When small numbers of companies own very large portions of industries, what it allows them to do is to manipulate those markets. And let's think about this for a second. What we have is commodities that are storable, non-perishable, transportable. What that allows a company to do is to withhold commodities from the market, store them for periods of time, buy them up in times of low prices, and then transport them and dump them into markets of high prices. With this level of concentration, what it allows them to do is not just respond to the prices in the marketplace, but to actually manipulate the prices in the marketplace, actually flood and withhold to make the price do what they want it to do. And there's been a lot of documentation of this over time. So the bottom line is, if a farmer has to compete with a major multinational corporation and a multinational corporation that controls enough of those markets to be able to manipulate it and where the company knows that the farmer has to sell at a certain time of year, is always going to sell, has no place else to go in terms of production, where the crop is easily storable, what that sets up and has set up over time is a recipe for disaster for the farmer. It is an inherently unfair market. So, we as a country recognized back in the 1930s, we need to protect these markets and provide the farmer some protection from corporate control in a way that is not necessary to the same extent in fruits and vegetables. So it is about making sure that farmers can stay in business in the face of very unfair competition and concentration.